Hello and welcome back to the Project Manchester United. Today we have two massive games, the biggest games of this season. We are up against Liverpool and Manchester City. Now we start on the Promises page because we have a few different things happening at the club. Um, first things first, Pogba obviously handed in his transfer request. Great player, but he wants to go. We've tried to sell him. No one wants him. Too big wages um, and too high of a transfer value for some. But we're not going to let him go for any cheaper than that, uh, especially if we want to bring in a top replacement. So, you know, we've tried to sign him. Nothing's really happened. Or we've tried to let him go. Nothing's happened. As well as that, apparently Bruno felt like he wasn't getting enough playing time. Um, so we've been playing him in every single game. And we found a way to make them all work. Now, while we go through a few things, I do want to note a few things as well. If we look at uh, Mason Greenwood, first of all, I mean, we'll go through transfers soon. Um, let's look at Mason Greenwood. Um, firstly, where is the old superstar? He is here. So, Mason Greenwood won a few awards he won uh he was in the england best 11 the the england overall best 11 etc he won the young player of the month for october we also won manager of the month for october which was brilliant but he got the 2022 fifa best under 21s men's player which is unbelievable um however he is if we go back on him he's currently unhappy at the club now the reason he's unhappy is because a transfer was blocked from PSG PSG uh, PSG tried to offer 69 million for him 69 million for the best under 21 player in the world beating so many players his transfer value 93 to 125 mil 69 million and it was like 25 up front and, and the rest in installments Mason, do you really think we're going to accept that? As well as wanting to keep you here because you're just unbelievable, we're not going to accept that. Um, so that was a bit of a, a weird one, uh, <laughs> which wasn't great. Jude Bellingham, he is starting to come into his own in the squad. And we say that because he won a few awards as well. He got European Golden Boy. Uh, Mason Greenwood got it last year. Bellingham got it this year. So it shows that since we're in charge of United, we are doing unbelievable jobs. Where's Pato these days? Orlando City. Anyway, um, so he got that. And he also got England Player of the Year, which, uh, of course, is a great, um, you know, great achievement, let's say. Mbappe got French Player of the Year. And Fernandez and Pedri. Uh, got team of the year, which was quite unbelievable. Um, in the Ballon d'Or, if we have a look at the Ballon d'Or, can we bring it up? The Ballon d'Or was won by Lewandowski. Second place was Bruno Fernandes. And third place was Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, one thing to note was that Bruno had the best average rating out of all three players. But of course, I mean... 43 appearances, 39 goals, 8 assists. 42 appearances, 39 goals and 6 assists. In a harder league at 37. Probably should have been Ronaldo there. Lewandowski second. But we'll let it slide. Uh, he's won a few in his time. And Lewandowski deserved it in real life. So why not let him have this one? Let's take a look at our transfer history. We have let a few players go. Um... Hogue of Water is on loan, Iqbal's gone, a few different players are obviously making their move. One that might be leaving us permanently soon is uh, Facundo Palistri. Now, when we sent him out on loan, of course, with this being a, um, a three-year project, we're a lot more flexible on contracts. He won't be in our team in three years. So if we can pick up a bit of money for him, we'll do so. Um, but he is actually after 15 matches, will be sold for 12.5 million. I'm certain that's mandatory as well. So 12.5 million coming into the club in, in you know, straight away is better than him just rotting in the under 23s. It's the same as we are trying to sell Brandon Williams 
for 15 million to Traz Bondsport. He's not going to be in the club this season or next season, which is our last season at the club. So we might as well get 15 million for him. Why not? It helps us. Um, you can obviously see we're, we're trying to, you know, get some other players, uh, and we'll see what we can do there. Alessandro Bastoni, we're trying to pull in for 150 mil. I'm quite confident we could do something. Just trying to keep it as low as possible money-wise um, and see what we can do there. If we look at our biggest out, it is Andreas Christensen. Christensen has gone to Tottenham. He came to United, made 12 appearances, wasn't great, never did anything amazing. But he was a player that we knew we weren't going to do massive things with. We bought him for 12.5, sold him for £10 million profit. I'm happy with that. That's exactly why he was brought in for. It's the same as Matthias Ginter as well. We got him on a free. He's worth 39 to 40 million. He's not really playing for us much, um, although he's doing quite well. But he's had four appearances since he's joined us. When it's time for him to go, we'll probably sell him. Um, unless, obviously, we do pick up Bastoni and we want to sell players and we want to sell someone like Lindelof and make Ginter our backup and, and, and see what we can do there. One more thing. The World Cup happened, of course, and the holders are Germany. Germany won 3-0. Karim Ediemi, uh, someone that we could potentially look at. I just don't like the fact he's a striker with 11 finishing. That doesn't uh, bode well for me. Uh, possibly better as like a shadow striker, I don't know. But clearly, he gets goals. Um, Raul Jimenez had a great tournament, um, but none of our players there unfortunately but Germany are the holders uh, back well since uh, 2014 so there you go they're, they're back to uh, winning it who got third place Sweden beat England to third place so we did beat um, well Italy well, hold on Italy got to the final <laughs> but they beat us on pens again um, you know Bad memories, bad memories. But, um, yeah, that's good. If we look at Cristiano Ronaldo, we extended his contract, but he was he wanted to, anyway, explore the options on his contract. We've hopefully removed that um, because he's just doing absolutely unbelievable for us. I think he's still our top scorer, 26 goals this season in 19 appearances. Why are we going to let that go? Um, and something quite interesting as well, the board increased our transfer budget from 51 to 69 million. So it came out of nowhere. We welcome it. More money. Uh, and talk about money, we have 70.84 million in the bank. So if we can bring Bastoni in uh, as a centre-back, good. <laughs> That's it. Um, we do have to obviously look at who we're, we're going to have um, in our side and, and one name that has done well so far three goals in two appearances is Yusofa Mukoko he almost got a hat-trick as well um, but two goals got disallowed one was against Barnsley one's was, one was against Blackburn Rovers and um, I think apparently he played in the Champions League might not be us uh, but two goals for us anyway so very very good there but like I said he could have had a hat-trick unfortunately got denied we're probably going to train his decisions, actually. So if we can go to training, um, additional focus. Can we choose decisions? Because we want him to make better decisions when he is in that uh, attacking, let's see, attacking movement. There we go. And it will do his decisions nicely. But he is obviously an unbelievable player. We got him for 15 million. He's already worth 65 to 70 million. And he comes into the side. Could he be our main striker next season when uh, Ronaldo possibly starts to decline? He, he's always about to decline, Ronaldo, and never does. One player we're playing a little bit more, Axel Twanzibi. Do we even need Bastoni? He's an unbelievable uh, centre-back. He's doing well for us, so we're keeping him in this side as much as we can. Of course, we've got Ginter. Of course, we've got Lindelof um, and Tellez and Luke Shaw. Are the best two options you could possibly hope for. Um, Bellingham apparently needs a rest. One player that has stepped up lately is Frank Kesse, and he stepped up as a box to box midfielder. We were potentially looking at uh, replacing him because he wasn't the most happy person in the side, but he's doing well, so we might 
uh, keep him in that role for now. The way we've been working is how we planned it. Fernandez as the advanced playmaker here still does an absolute job. Um, and Pedri in the attacking midfielder role, he's been doing unbelievable. Um, really, really picked up his form. Last five games, three goals, two assists. And I don't think he's been playing in any of the easy games, no. So he, he's doing really well there. Two goals against Bayern Munich, which was good. Um, was it a friendly, actually? I don't know. It might have been a friendly. Um, but even so, uh, he got an assist against Leicester City in the return game. Got an assist in, against Tottenham. So he's doing very well, as expected. And I think when Bellingham is back, we're going to change this to a Mazzala um, and, and play him there and just have an advanced playmaker and a Mazzala in the middle to get the best out of both of them. Our left mid is still Kylian Mbappe. Rashford, he's doing really well. He's, he's dropped off a little bit, but I think that's because we're not giving him as many minutes as he was getting in his rich vein of form. So uh, that's unfortunate. And Greenwood, hopefully we can keep him happy by playing him as much as possible and giving him as many games as possible. So with that being said, we're going to get into the game playing Greenwood. He's got the... Um, Actually, no, we're Liverpool away, so we're going to change our formation, aren't we? We're going to put Kese as the deep, um, as the defensive mid, and we're going to put a Mazzala here, an advanced playmaker here, and swap those two around. That should be good. Um, what else are we missing out on? Paul Pogba could possibly come into the side, but he wants to be sold, so why are you going to be in my team? Um, Scott McTominay and James Garner could potentially put Van der Beek instead of James Garner there and Tellers, Ginter and Henderson fills up the rest of the bench Paul Lindelof isn't getting many minutes I might switch out Ginter for Lindelof he deserves it um, but we are obviously going up against Liverpool away now if we look at our schedule and our competitions before we get into this we obviously had a great October when we left off um, we did lose 2-0 to Bayern Munich but we had literally just a random team out it didn't bother us at all Paul Pogba on the wing Alanga on the wing uh, we, we put out everyone we were through we were top we didn't care had friendlies during the World Cup as well. Um, and since we've returned, 4-0 against Leicester, 3-0 against Tottenham. Two cup wins to uh, advance us in the rounds. And now we have three games this week. Liverpool, Liverpool and Man City. Of course, we'll show uh, the Liverpool Premier League game and the Man City Premier League game at home and Liverpool away. Now, Liverpool away is the hardest one. Their home game is there. However... If we look at our form, we have been doing really, really well and we are top of the table. Everyone's on level games now in that top three and we are the one at the top. So if we can win today or even pull off a draw, I'd probably be happy. We'd still be sitting top 52 goal difference. That's unbelievable. Um, I'd be happy if we lose it becomes an issue. Um, our three players are top on average rate and we're just having an unbelievable season. If we look at our Champions League, we have drawn Atletico Madrid. So I think we played them in a friendly during... Um, we played them in a friendly in pre-season, beat them 2-1, played them in a friendly in during Christmas time, beat them 3-0. If that is... Uh, basis for anything then good we have Southampton at home in the next round of the FA Cup we have Liverpool in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup and uh, hopefully we win everything so we'll see um, but we go on from here um, we are quite excited the way we've been playing the way we have been um, performing with this formation in in place and everything like that could possibly switch this to defend um, if things are going a little bit wrong but we'll see that when we reach that bridge everyone's fit, everyone's happy wan on a yellow card everyone's in the greens uh, which is brilliant to see and if we go over to our opposition we are going to tight mark never tackle hard um, on there we're going to press Mane um, he's not in great form so we're going to leave him we're going to press Ward Prowse we are going to show on to weaker foot there to uh, wing backs and we are ready to go. So finally, after a massive update 
of the season we already were playing. Uh, Bruno in the Mazzala, Pedri in the advanced playmaker role. Will it work? Let's have a look. Um, we're excited. I, f I feel confident, weirdly. It is annoying it's away game, but I'd rather get the away game out of the way now. So if it comes to the last day of the season at home, I'm, I'm very confident that we can uh, take them. And hopefully that will be the case. So we owe Liverpool after what happened. Go out there, get revenge. I'm pumping my fist. I expect to see solid defensive work. That is the basis. And I trust the attackers and the midfield to make the difference. That is the big thing for us. Liverpool line up in their classic 4-3-3. We really should have gone through um, who they lost to and, and how we've ended up top of the table. So we'll go through that in a minute. I just want to make sure we have key highlights on. Um, and I guess before we do go, we will try and pull up uh, Liverpool's schedule before we get into this game and show who they've been losing to, who they've been winning against. And for some reason, again, it's quite choppy, which is annoying. Um, I've got to figure that out. I, I feel like it's when I'm playing FM too much and I'm changing between only commentary and key highlights and it, you know, it just messes with it a little bit. We could actually have an early start as Mbappe gets away, goes around. Jesus Christ, killing Mbappe, man. Put it away. What's he trying to cross there for? Um, we've been absolutely FM there. As Bruno whips one in and uh, only goes as far as Mo Salah on the clearance. Greenwood intercepts Pedri in the advanced playmaker role instead of attacking midfielder today. Now, before we get into that, let's quickly take a look at Liverpool's schedule and see who they have uh, dropped to. So they picked up their first loss all the way in December in the Premier League to Arsenal. They dropped points there, which was key for us. They obviously dropped points against City and Southampton, but they also dropped points lately against Chelsea, which allowed us uh, the opportunity to go top of the table. So we have to make sure that we keep that and uh, we do very well. Um, to stay top because these are the games that matter. Pedri whips one in. Ronaldo on the header. Mbappe scores his eighth goal. He could have scored ages ago. He chose not to. He wanted to pass. Ronaldo returning their favour there. And uh, we score 1-0 away from home at Anfield. We're silencing Anfield. Great ball into Ronaldo. Ronaldo finds Mbappe free. Rather than trying to get those neck muscles to hit the back of the net, he just knocks it on to Mbappe who volleys it into the back of the net we're going to go cautious because they've had about four to five shots and they've switched possession around completely um and do we encourage the team no everyone's quite happy at the moment we're going to leave it as it is but on cautious we are inviting pressure and we need to make sure we do well we're going to demand more from the team we don't know how they react because we get straight into a highlight where it's cleared out to pavard in the right back role. Mohamed Salah picks it up, plays it through to Ward Prowse, who's in great form, but Twanzibi deals with that. Twanzibi playing in pro he's got to be offside. He has to be offside. There's no way he's on. Um, Twanzibi playing in probably the most important game uh, we've played him in this season, really given the faith in him while Varane is out. And luckily that goal is disallowed. And we have just demanded more beforehand Let's see how offside he was. Yeah, well off. Um, their players are tiring a little bit as well. So hopefully that's something we can capitalise on. Uh, but they do have another highlight. Van Dijk, Fabinho. They are two players we need to watch out for. They've actually put it back post. I think the ball hit the bar there, which is very scary. We go defensive, which again might invite pressure. But this is the kind of thing you have to do away at Anfield um, we're going to say you know what that's a good first half we, we've got to give it to them they are performing well every player is performing decently we have to give it to them but there is a highlight 30 seconds into the second half starting with Liverpool our high press there uh, doing really well could possibly drop it now we're trying to see the game out but if we get a second we'll definitely do that let's see what ends with this highlight Kese to Twanzibi 
back to Maguire. We're a little bit too casual for my liking. There could be a ball or two that could happen. Mbappe deciding not to run. Bruno makes the run instead. Can he whip one in? He does. Ronaldo on the header. There it is. Number 27. The Portuguese link up. It's absolutely unbelievable. We're now going to drop everything. Uh, we are going to keep the counter. Um, but we're going to drop everything else. Just not only to save fitness compared to Liverpool. But to try and see this game out. Play defensive. Play short. Keep the ball and uh, hopefully we can do well. Let's have a look at this goal. I was surprised Mbappe wasn't making that run. Um, Mbappe's he he's weirded me out a little bit. You expect him to join the team and become the 50 goal a season striker um, that he really should be. But he's not doing bad. He's assisting. He, I mean, he started scoring a bit more recently. But he's assisting. He's getting involved in goals. He is, you know, playing key passes, things like that. Let's see what he does here. Actually, it's Pedri on his own. Almost putting it in the back of the net. Again, apologies for the uh, glitchy, glitchy gameplay. Um, I don't mind if wan gets. But actually, we probably do, considering um, we need him for the next few games. But we don't have an active right back. So I think we are going to have to leave him on. Um, is there anyone else that we take off? Greenwood is, is on a 6.6, .6, not playing too well. We'll take him off for Jadon Sancho. Could that be because he is unhappy at the club? Um, and we're going to put these two on defend, actually. So just to tighten up the back, as we do win the ball back, wan here, actually, on that defend duty now, is on the byline. wan do not get a yellow card. Pedri um, out to Thiago. Wins the ball and clears it to Firmino. Jones across. Good interception by Mbappe. Why is he so far back? Ronaldo. If Ronaldo is onside, it is 3-0. He looks to be onside. And I, I think we have beaten Liverpool 3-0 away from home. Our tactical prowess is set in place. The familiarity for the players is there now. We are the team to beat. We are the team top of the table. We've got to translate this into the Champions League and we've got to keep this going throughout the entire season. But I'm confident. I am feeling confident. And with that, we're going to sub off Ronaldo. We're going to put on um, Yusofa Makoko in that advanced forward role. What a game for him to come into at 18 years old. And we're going to try and sub off. Yeah, we do have one. We will sub off Mbappe for Marcus Rashford. Um, very, very happy with the result. And we might even make it better. Or we might give up our clean sheet. Uh, Curtis Jones in the middle gives it back to Virgil van Dijk. Out to Matip. Thiago out to Mane. Um, as, as, as this move develops... We do have to focus on last season. A lot of our issues was away from home. And I feel like we... We're patient with it. We found a tactic that worked. We found that we were conceding goals that we didn't have to. Became a little bit more defensive. We played with shorter passing. That wasn't working. We decided to keep the direct passing on it for more counter-attack football. We were patient with it. It worked. And now we're sitting top of the table, beating Liverpool at Anfield 3-0, possibly 4. Bruno Fernandes steps up for a free kick. Is he shooting? He is. He hits the bar. Lucky, lucky Liverpool. Um, but a very, very good result. And of course, we do have Liverpool midweek in the EFL Cup semi-final. Cannot remember if it's home or away. But the way this is going, that doesn't really matter. Um, we'll make slight adjustments due to fitness and, and whatnot. But uh, hopefully we can retain the EFL Cup. And that starts by beating them in the semi-final. Which I believe Arsenal and Man City is the other semi-final. So it won't be an easy final either. As Mo Salah whips one in. Can we get that clean sheet? We do. We get a clean sheet at Anfield. Despite them having 30 shots. That is a tactical genius right there. An unbelievable result. We go top of the league by four points, possibly two if City win their game. But we have done very, very well. We've got Klopp angry. Ronaldo, 
you're going to get a pat on the shoulder. You were superb in front of goal. Um, five matches, one in a row in the league. We're doing very well. We're on unbelievable form. We've got Liverpool. Oh, it's at a neutral venue. Wembley, of course. And then we've got Man City. So we're going to play the Man City game next. I will show you the update on the Liverpool uh, semi-final. Hopefully, we go through to the final to face Arsenal or Chelsea. So we are back for the Manchester derby. Uh, two points ahead in the league. Um, Man City second. Liverpool have now dropped down to third. And hopefully we can extend that gap even more so on Manchester City at home at Old Trafford against our rivals. We unfortunately are knocked out of the EFL Cup and we will not be retaining our trophy we lost 2-1. It will be a Chelsea versus Liverpool final. Um, and it was a bit of a weird game. I mean, Ronaldo missed a penalty. They had, I think, I mean, Salah scored a pen. They also had, like, two that weren't awarded. We were just getting really quite unlucky. But um, we weren't great. And uh, we paid for it, basically. And hopefully we uh, bounce back with a win against Manchester City. So we're going to go into this game. Um, we're going to stay positive. We are going to keep the same side relatively that we have. We're going to put Bellingham here. And we're going to play for the first time the Mazzola and Advanced Playmaker um, midfield duo. Uh, apparently, Lindelof's off to Sweden for some reason. Varane is slowly coming back from fitness, so that is good news. We'll try and get him involved in some under-23 games before joining us um, in the first team. And I think we're ready to get into the game. De Gea, Wambasaka, Maguire, Twanzibi and Shaw. I feel like we should drop Greenwood. His last two games, what has he had? A 6.7 and a 6.6. .6. Um, it's a possibility we drop him. If he's unhappy, Sancho starts. It's as simple as that. No matter how good he is, you have to want to play for this club to play. It's a sad sight to see because Greenwood could be, you know, the next Ronaldo leading this club forward. Um, and unfortunately, he wants to go to PSG. So uh, that's not good news. Anyone that we're missing from the bench? I don't think so. Paul Pogba um, isn't going to be on the bench today. So we'll just go to our opposition, ask our system. We're going to put everything on Erling Haaland, bar obviously the hard tackling. Um, we're going to press their two wingers. We're going to put everything on Phil Foden, everything on De Bruyne. They're a strong team. Um, but other than that, I think just show their two uh, wingbacks on uh, their weaker foot if they come down the side on the overlap. We're playing our 4-2-3-1, our positive attacking formation. Nothing defensive about our play today. We are at home. We're at Old Trafford. We are top of the table. We look dangerous. We feel dangerous. And hopefully we can show them why. Um, a lot to say here. We're going to go with the trust and uh, the tried and tested one down here. The defenders are feeling quite aggressive, which is good. I want them aggressive. I just don't want you getting um, red cards. So everyone's motivated. Twanzibi's aggressive. Hopefully he can turn that into a good performance. Um, the midfield three of Bellingham, Fernandez, and Pedri. Of, of course, Pedri in that attacking midfielder role now. Um, we put him back in the cup into the advanced playmaker and Fernandez up front. And it didn't work out. So maybe that is a reason why we lost the game. Um, but he's back in that attacking midfielder role. And of course, we're trying out Bellingham in this Mazzola role for the first time. Hopefully that means he, he does less defensive work on, on the box-to-box -box role. And he just focuses on getting forward um, and getting a bit wider to assist in the attacks. And we might see that in the opening two minutes here as Luke Shaw gets the ball on the left-hand side, plays the ball over the top to Mbappe. He's got the pace to beat everyone, and he's got the skill to finish. What a finish. Killing Mbappe, he's the kind of guy that you expect to do that every single time there's an attack. I mean, first of all, he's making the run forward, which is what we want. Um, but 
let this season you don't expect him to put those away hopefully that is the start of something new where he's going to be absolutely burying every chance that falls to him but what a start in the Manchester derby um, a very very good start Luke Shaw do we take him off early doors do we try and um, leave him let's see what he does here has he just pulled the groin there probably not I think we're going to take him off unfortunately um, and put tellers on it it's the safest thing to do to save any long-term injuries so we're going to do that while the highlight plays out tellers is going to come on um, in the next phase of play Mbappe down the left hand side he's been busy in the Manchester derby so far whips one into Sancho who comes on for Greenwood today uh, with Greenwood being unhappy, but it results to nothing. Twan Zibi wins that back, that aggressive nature. Pedri in the attacking midfielder role, plays it back to Mbappe, to Bellingham in the Mazzala. Shaw, oh my God. Right, there's no way in, in the world that's offside. We've just subbed him off. Where's your tight groin, Shaw? Shaw, you just volleyed that in the back of the net. The replay's already going. He's, he's got to be on. Bellingham to Mbappe, sure. That's unbelievable. Ronaldo did not score. There's no what? Poor Shaw, but two assists. He comes off. What an absolute appearance for him. Five shots to one. They're holding most of the possession, but we are attacking them and putting them under pressure, not allowing them time on the ball. Harry Maguire gets in on the act. 30 minutes in, 3 0. Old Trafford is absolutely bouncing. We're top of the league, back where we belong. We've just beaten Liverpool 3 0. We're beating Man City 3 0. We are back, but. Rio said that last time. So, you know, give him what he wants. Um, Gary's at the will, but uh, it could all go wrong here as Mendy goes on the attack down the left hand side. Sancho wins it back, plays nice little short football with Pedri, Wambasaka, and Maguire. Wambasaka gives it away. Phil Foden's free. Phil Foden tucks it away. Poor. Poor, poor, poor. We should be doing better than that. Wambasaka, uh, we're not going to give you a shout. Let's, let's put it down to a mistake, but those mistakes should not be happening. Um, Sancho, on the right-hand side, we've started very high. Man City starting to get the attacks now. Maybe we were too confident 30 minutes into the game as he plays it out to Mendy. They're keeping the ball nicely. Man City, I don't think, will give the ball away the same as wan -Bissaka did. Laporte just holding it back. I mean, he, he's got three minutes added on in the first half. He's got time to just hold it here. No press, despite us being on press, you know, triggering the press more often and a high start. We're boding the patience as Foden gets played through. Now, I'm certain he's offside there. I'm absolutely certain of it, but he's not. Phil Foden has scored two consecutive goals there, and somehow we've let him walk through. Is he on? I don't think he is. But that is quite a, a turnaround. And it we've got to see. Um, where's the complacent one? Stick to the plan. Don't get complacent. That's what we need because we did towards the end of that first half. Five minutes left and we've given them... Uh, way back into this game and they very well might turn it into 3-3 we're going to need to drop to balance here um, and, and possibly change a few things about with the shorter pass and the tempo etc because this is not good enough but can we extend the lead before we do that Maguire out across to Twan Zibi. Can he play a ball through the middle? He does to Pedri. Pedri finds Mbappe, who keeps making that run now. Ronaldo's across the box. Mbappe goes himself. Cuts back. Pedri. Pedri again. Pedri gets his fifth goal of the season. That's why we're playing him in the attacking midfielder role. Pedri gets in on the act. He's knackered, but he makes sure to uh, contribute before he potentially goes off. Do we have Diego Dallo as well? No, we don't. So Matthias Ginter is our only right-back option for wan who's performing poorly and is quite uh, tired. But now we look to close the game out. We're going to keep a uh, shorter pass and lower tempo. Out of possession, we're going to trigger the press and we're going to regroup slow pace down. But when we win possession, we're going to counter nice and fast and uh, keep that press on them. We've opened up a two-goal lead yet again. We're back on balance. 
just you know not to be too confident we might even drop to cautious um with the tactics that we're playing now bernardo plays through harland he's not going to miss but he does david de gea strong hands we're going to drop to cautious um possibly even defensive soon we're going to put these on wing back defend Teles as well wing back defend uh we could possibly drop him now to a box to box midfielder he, he's got a 6.8 in that role um none of those changes went through i don't think but we might have to make a few changes here so who's knackered pedri is absolutely gone so we're going to drop uh that in there and put mctominay in that role we've got one change left who do we want it to be um bruno i think could come off but we've got center mid options if he's too tired wamba sack is knackered we've got an option for him if he's tired um, Mbappe, Ronaldo, I think we've got striking options. So I think I'm going to bring off Mbappe um, and bring on Yusuf Koko. Another big game for him to prove himself. Paul Martial's not really getting any games anymore. Um, but when you sign an absolute wonder kid like Mukoku, you're going to drop your game time. Maguire, oh, he's almost got his second of the game with a near post header hitting the post. Um, but a very, very good game. We've beat Manchester City 4-2. What a... Hold on. It might even be more. Wan-Bissaka, Twan Zibi getting involved. Mukoko. Oh, he's laid it off. Mukoko. Oh, we wanted him to score in the Manchester derby. It didn't happen. Surely it's over now. Um, but great result. Uh, great episode. Liverpool and Manchester City both beaten. Mukoko. Oh, he's done it in the Manchester derby. He has shown why we bought him on instead of Martial. He has shown why we have paid 15 million for a 16-year-old. He's unbelievable. He, he Every chance he gets, he's putting away. He is a wonder kid. If we can develop him properly, we have him. Well, we're here for one more year, so we have him for one more year. And hopefully, we can do very well with that. Uh, I'm pleased with the win, beating our rivals, well done, we are top of the league, we have opened up a very, very good gap now, and uh, everyone's troubled, everyone's upset, that's what we want in this City and Liverpool camp, let's have a look, even if they win, they are still four points behind us, we have opened up a gap that could be key, and we've got to make it count, there's not long in this season left, we have got a few, to be fair, West Ham Villa both winnable games. This month is easy. There's no denying that. We're, we're probably going to slip up and lose all of them, knowing us. But Brighton, Southampton, Fulham, Southampton again. Well, in the league anyway. Bournemouth, Sheffield, we should be winning those. This month, March could get a little bit harder. Arsenal, Everton, Chelsea. Everton obviously finished, what, third or fourth last season? They're 14th right now. Um... April's quite an easy month, so we could open up gaps there. And then obviously Tottenham and Liverpool uh, in the last few months, or in the last month. The rest of the fixtures, they seem winnable. We could do well. Champions League, first knockout round. Leg, I mean, there's there's some easy ties in there, some big teams still. But some teams also not even involved. I mean, where is Barcelona, by the way? They finished fourth in their group behind Feyenoord, that's awful, Bayern Munich was third in their group, Roma third in their group, Ajax third in their group, so some key, key teams not even making it through, <sighs> unbelievable, we will see you probably for the uh, Atletico Madrid and Chelsea game, why not? We may have played Chelsea this season already, so we might go to Everton and Atletico Madrid. But we'll see if we can beat the Madrid side to get through to the next knockout round and close out some of these games. Hopefully, they're all green. Hopefully, we can keep our lead at the top of the table. We have also got £99 million to spend. Now, why is that? Brandon Williams got sold. That's why. £50 million. Tras Bon Sport. We kept all of it. Um and Palistri went as well. So we got 12.5 million. Who do we bring in? We are looking at a few different options. If we go to our shortlist, we're obviously trying to get Bastoni. We, we've put in bids for Jules Koundé, who's got a release clause of 123 million. Do we pay it? 
Do we get him in? Do we make him our starting defender, basically, uh, over maybe Maguire? Varane gets just injured constantly, which is very frustrating. Um, so there's a possibility we just pay 123 million for him, and, and we just go for it. Um, you've got other options: Milinkovic, Savic could come in. I feel like we're we're well built in the midfield now. Bellingham, Fernandez, Pedri, our main three. Then we've got Van der Beek, Tottenham, uh, Tottenham, McTominay, uh, Kese, Garner, etc. So the middle for me is fine. The wingers. If Greenwood leaves, we've only really got Sancho. Could we get another winger in? Uh, Mbappe, Rashford, this side. Ronaldo, Mukoko up front. Martial. I'm happy with everything else. Could just be the centre back options. But again, Swanzibi's doing well. Maybe we keep our faith in him, save the money. Do we get a right winger in uh, in backup for Sancho? This is all things we're going to figure out. But it's only January. We don't need to figure it out that much i don't think we need anyone right now for the rest of the season so hopefully we are good ronaldo 30 goals in 22 games in january unbelievable thank you for watching if you have enjoyed please leave a like comment down below and please do subscribe thank you for watching goodbye